Creating HTML emails is still a pain, even in 2024. You need to add a lot of inline CSS and not even all CSS properties are supported by the email clients and so many such problems. But what if you could use your favorite Tailwind CSS itself to style your mail views and stay in your comfort zone? With Maisel, you can do exactly that. In this video, we'll see how to integrate Maisel into a Laravel project and seamlessly design all the email views using Tailwind. So what is Maisel? If you already know what it is and convinced that you want to use it, you can skip to the next part. Maisel is a tool that helps you style your HTML emails using Tailwind CSS, which means you don't have to research and write the CSS that's acceptable by email clients. You can simply use the utility classes that you're familiar with and leave the heavy lifting for Maisel. It's also packed with a lot of good features like use of Markdown, front matter for custom data, code minification, support for custom fonts, and so much more. You can explore these on your own. Now, let's get started with the integration. I have a freshly installed Laravel application here. You can also create a new Laravel app and try this along with me. If you like using Maisel, you can go ahead and integrate into your existing Laravel project. First, let's go to maisel.com m-a-i-z-z-l-e dot com click on the documentation navigate to installation down here and scroll down or click on manual setup here first we'll have to download the starter project so let's copy the first command here and here let me open the terminal and paste the command change my project to Maisel instead so this will create a Maisel project within our Laravel application. Go back to the documentation and uh, you'll have to CD into Maisel and then install the dependencies. So let's go back, CD Maisel and NPM install. This might take a while. So now we have Maisel installed within Laravel. Let's run it locally first. I mean, clear, I'm going to clear this. Let's run it locally with npm run dev. So now our local server is started. So open this URL in the browser. And here you can see all the sample templates are already available with the starter project. So we have two templates. One is transactional. Let me open that and promotional. So here this is what the starter template looks like from Maisel. And this is the promotional email. So you can design something like this using Tailwind CSS and Maisel will optimize it a little for the email clients and then you're good to go. Great, right? So now let's look at the source code for these and try to modify. Go to the Maisel directory where you will see all these files. We will look at some of them a little later. But for now, go into the SRC folder. And within that, you will have a templates folder. That's where both our templates are present. So let me close the terminal for now and I'll open transactional.html. The first thing you'll notice is we have some variables defined in YAML style front matter blocks. We'll see in a moment where they are used. And we'll also talk about this X main tag right here. But apart from these, if you scroll down and look, everything else is normal email view using tables and rows and columns and all our, all the familiar Tailwind utility classes that you already know. As you can see, you can even use arbitrary values like this and also breakpoints like SM, MD and so on. The only difference, however, is that Maisel uses desktop first approach for these modifiers. So you can see max width media queries in place of the default min width in Tailwind. The reason for this is that certain desktop email clients like Outlook and Microsoft 365 don't support media queries. So I would ideally try and avoid media queries altogether. But in some cases, it's good to optimize slightly for mobile. So I'll leave all of these right away uh, as it is. And next, if you scroll down further, you will notice some components like X spacer, X button, X divider and so on. Maisel provides some of these basic components to make it easier to create these views, like easier to add or add some consistent spacing between blocks, easier to add buttons or links that actually look like buttons and also dividers. 
You can find all of these in the components directory right here. You can explore them on your own. Now, if you come back up, this X main tag is because we are extending a layout called main. So this main.html has all the HTML tags, the meta tags, the body tags, and this style block also. This content from our template is actually inserted right here where you can see the content tag. So if you see there are these variables like preheader and title, these are the ones that we are filling from the template, right? So preheader and title and so on. And here you can see a body class. Yeah, all of these. So Maisel uses this triple bracket syntax for variables. You can change this in the config, but I would leave it as it is. So any value in this layout file, if you want to change dynamically in the templates, you can do that right here at the top. And you can ignore these uh, errors just because of the triple bracket syntax. So this style block right here is the most important part. All the Tailwind CSS utility classes get compiled into regular CSS and gets included right here. So if you remove this, you don't get any styling. So that's it. Uh, these are the basics of Maisel you need to know for now. I won't be going deeper into this framework. You can read the docs, which is pretty good and explore all the other stuff. So I will close the layout file for now and let's focus on making these views compatible with Blade and be able to use them directly from our Laravel application. Since our local server is running in watch mode here, you can make any changes and be able to view them in the browser instantly. So if I scroll down to the button here, let me change the default color of this button. For now, we can see that it's uh, probably indigo or something. So let me change that to, let's say, BG Rose 500. Okay, I'm, I've saved the file and now you can already see the changes uh, live right here. So this is great. You can change the views the way you want. I would probably use this exact same template, probably rename it to something that I would like in my application and change all the content that I need and style it exactly the way I want. Right, so this is great. Let's stop the local server for now and let's build this for production. For that, let me run the command npm run build. Let's see what happens. So the moment you do this, it says it, it has built two templates and where are the build templates? You can find them here in build production directory, which wasn't present before. So within this, you can see both the HTML files. And if you click on one of them, you will notice that this contains the complete HTML, the final HTML with all the, you know, styles here and all the inline styles, like, you know, exactly the way the email clients would prefer. So this is the final HTML that we are going to use. What a lot of people actually what they do is they copy this entire HTML and paste it into their blade views and then probably add variables and modify to suit their needs. But that unnecessarily takes extra effort. What if you later want to change some styles? You'll have to manually add them and it's the same problem again, right? So now instead of exporting this production ready files into build production, let's try and export them directly into our resources and views directory in our Laravel application. So for that, let me close this and let's open this file. Sorry, where is it? Yeah, let's open this file called config.production.js. So this contains all the configuration with respect to production. So right here, let me change the path to dot dot slash resources because we have to go one level higher for our project root slash views slash emails. And let's also change the extension to blade extension because that's what we will need. So I will say blade dot php. All right. Now let's try running npm run build and see what happens. Okay. So the moment you do this, Let's go to our resources and views. And now you see we have this new emails directory with the same transactional and promotional blade files. Yeah, with the blade extension. That's something you need to note. 
and then we also have this images folder so this images folder has been directly copied from mazel src images folder right but usually that's not what we would need we don't need the images within our views we probably need it within the public directory images right so let's go back to the config file I'm just going to close everything yeah and right here let's use the assets key to change the destination of the images and this path is actually relative to this uh, emails folder you can see that in the documentation so what we need to do is we need to go three levels up to reach the public folder right here and within that let's say we'd like to use the emails folder within public within images so that's where we want our destination now let's try building again i'll clear npm run build okay it's it says completed and let's check in our public folder we have images we have emails and this is the image that was present great so we will even have to change the path here for our image so let's go back up and this is no more just emails it's images it's images slash emails slash mazel of course you may want to use the asset function here uh, we'll do that also in a while so now let's try building this one last time npm run build okay now let's try and preview these emails in laravel for that i would close all of these and i'll open our routes file web.php add a new route something like a preview email or test email and return the emails blade view here so i'll say return view emails.transactional all right so now let's try and test this laravel mazel dot test slash test email ah perfect so notice we have the image also loading here great so now the only thing remaining is to be able to use variables in our emails like we might want to add the person's name here and we'll definitely pass that in our model or wherever we are setting up we are sending the emails right so let's go back to our template and in blade you would do something like this you would pass use the name variable here so let's see what happens if we leave this as it is and build it this builds it let me go back and refresh you'll see undefined why is that let's also look at the you know the build file here so let me open build file right here if you scroll down okay this is a long way down yeah you'll see that it's compiled itself to undefined that is because what mazel did was it looked at this and tried to resolve the name variable right here we don't want mazel to do that we want it to retain as it is in the final build file we want it exactly like this so to make mazel ignore this we'll have to prepend it with an ampersand so the moment you do this mazel will ignore this it will not try to resolve the variable right there so now let's build one last time and if you look here again you'll have to scroll all the way down it's retained and if you go here and refresh yeah it'll obviously say undefined variable let's pass the data here with name shruti okay so now if i refresh i'm able to see here so this way you can add any number of variables in this url can be dynamic you can pass it uh, along with the view and things like that so similarly let's also use the asset function to display the image go back to the image and here uh, let me just open braces use the asset function and copy this instead and paste it right here but don't forget to prepend this with an ampersand and now if you build again and go back and refresh it remains the same so that's it everything is done 
A quick recap of what we did, we first installed Mazel manually in the root of our Laravel application, installed the dependencies and ran it locally, making all the changes needed right here in the SRC templates file. So you can add all your email views right here within templates, build them locally and make all the changes that you need. And once it's done, we changed the production configuration. We changed the path, the extension, and we also changed the assets destination. Finally, we included the necessary variables pre prepending it with an ampersand to make Maisel ignore this. So now you can use Tailwind CSS to create your email views in Laravel with the seamless workflow. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know in the comments below. Bye-bye. Until next time. Thank you for watching. Hit a like and share this video ahead. If you enjoyed watching this, don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you won't miss a single video from Tyrus.